In terms of software, that pretty much covers it up. Now hitting on the performance side of things, the Pixel 4 has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset, an octa-core CPU, an Adreno 640 GPU, and 6 gigs of RAM on both models of the device. There was a 64 gig model and a 128 gig model, where the Pixel 5 has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G chipset, an octa-core CPU, an Adreno 620 GPU, and 8 gigs of RAM on that single model, the 128 gig model. Now this is where Google, I think, cut probably the majority of the corners at. I really don't think the performance is bad on the Pixel 4 and I don't think the performance is bad on the Pixel 5. I think when I first read those spec sheets I was kind of afraid because I thought the Pixel 5 was going to be better at RAM management but slower overall in terms of day-to-day -day performance and I really don't think that's the case. I honestly also think that the 90Hz refresh rate helps the Pixel 5 to appear smoother than it is even though it's not. It's just a smoother refresh rate. I think the Pixel 4 was a pretty good performing device. You know it's shared the same chipset as most of the flagships last year but now with the pixel 5 instead of having that snapdragon 865 we have that 765 which is you know the more budget chipset that i think the oneplus nord also has now it's not the end of the world i think that you know performance on the pixel 5 is actually pretty good but the thing you also have to keep in mind is that we are not comparing the Pixel 5 against those flagships in the price tag. I'll end up doing it anyway to see what the main differences are, but this phone doesn't cost $1,000. It costs $699, and it's probably going to get even cheaper then. Where the Pixel 4 was retailing, I believe, for $799 or something like that, it got a ton of price cuts throughout the year because they were just practically trying to give them away to people. And I think with that, Google actually probably you know, bit themselves in the foot or whatever that analogy is because there weren't that many people who would rather have picked up a Pixel 4 or Pixel 4 XL when you had phones like the Galaxy S10 at that time and even shortly after the Note 10s and the S20s, they were just flooding the market and those phones were better than the Pixel 4 and 4 XL. So when you have a phone like a Pixel 5 that doesn't cost as much as those ones, it is competing in that sector of a budget type of device and that performance is pretty good. You know, it's stock Android, you're not going to have a bunch of things in the background and for the majority of things that I use this phone for, again, I'm not like saying I'm using this phone for everything, but when I was testing it, the normal things that I test with the device, it was actually a pretty good performing device in my opinion. So I think in terms of performance, I didn't really see a pretty big difference from a Pixel 4 to a Pixel 5. I'll probably end up telling you that I think that maybe the Pixel 4 has its advantages. But I also think the Pixel 5 also has its advantages too. And I don't think one is, you know, the far better performing one. But I do like how the Pixel 5 definitely has more RAM. So that is how I would kind of break that specific situation down in the performance. Now.